Um, thanks so much, everyone, for being here today. I'm really excited to talk with you folks about intentional influence for introverts, which is actually kind of interesting because I think this is going to be a little bit of an opposite spin of what Sarah just talked about. So hopefully you folks will come away um, with some great learnings today. Um, but the first thing that I wanted to do, aside from Rachel just introducing me, um, is give you folks a little bit more background about myself. So uh, the, there's, I think, two things that you're probably wondering right now. First, who is this Amanda person? And why is she here and qualified to talk about all of this stuff? And I'm very sorry to disappoint you all, um, but unfortunately, I am not professionally qualified for this in any sense. Um, but it is a topic that I care deep, deeply about and feel it's a huge part of my professional career. Uh, so two things that maybe possibly might qualify me to talk about this are, first of all, that I am a complete introvert. Um, and to show you folks what I mean by that, I wanted to take a quick peek into what my life looks like. We're going to play a, a little game of uh, now and then, um, as the youth call it nowadays. Um, but this is actually a photo of me now. As Rachel mentioned, I've been enjoying playing Stardew Valley at home in quarantine, um, just doing my thing. Um, and maybe not surprisingly, this is a photo of me before quarantine. So you can see that there's not been a ton of change in my life. As an introvert, I have been playing this social distancing game for a very long time now, and I consider myself pretty much an expert at it. Uh, so now that you folks have a better idea of how much of an introvert I am, the second thing that I wanted to share with you all is that I actually really love figuring out what makes people click. Um, and that's kind of weird, right? I kind of just said that I don't really like people that much, but uh, now I'm saying that I kind of like to think about people. There's some weirdness going on there, but yep, yeah, that's just who I am. And those two things are a big part of what makes me so passionate about this topic. Um, so once in a while, I try to do these sorts of influence building activities like networking, presenting, and stuff exactly like this event that we're at right now. <laughs> but these sorts of things, in all honesty, even though it might look like I practiced this and got it figured out, these things really stress me out. I was up all night trying to get this together, feeling anxious. and it, But it's something that I know is really good for me and is an important building block in my professional career. So I have to figure out a way to make this work. Um, and some of you might feel a similar way too. So what I'm really excited to talk to you folks about today is just really to get a conversation started about how you can really empower yourself to build influence, even if it's something that feels really challenging to you. Um, I'm gonna share a few strategies with you folks, but the first thing that I wanted to talk about is why is that exactly is this influence thing important? Um, and what does it really mean? Um, it can be a really confusing thing. We talk about influencers a lot in the context of social media nowadays. Um, but um, let's take a look at this in terms of your professional career. So I have a couple questions for you folks that I would love to see some participation in the chat. Um, feel free to comment away if you can share your experiences, if you feel comfortable. If not, just think about these questions in your head for a second. All right. So the first question that I have for you all is how many of you have had a colleague receive credit for work that you did? Let's see if there's anyone chatting away. Yep, I think there's a couple of people. Totally, yeah. <laughs> all right. So it sounds like this is a pretty common experience amongst us all. Um, the second question that I have for you folks is, how many of you have had a great idea that was never able to see the light of day? Anyone here? I know I definitely have. <laughs> all right, a lot of you too. All right, the last question that I have for you all is, how many of you have been passed over for opportunities that you were qualified for? All right, yep. 
yeah, it's looking like a lot of people have experienced these things. And this is why I think influence is so important. Um, influence really helps you actually proactively advocate your, for yourself when you're not always in the room. I think this is a super important thing for folks who are underrepresented or minoritized in the workplace because you can create an image for yourself that speaks before you're even present. Um, it's all really about staying in the driver's seat of your own career. This is who I want to be. Not quite there yet, but we will get there. <laughs> um, so yes, this is why influence is so important. And I think that we've all kind of had these experiences and we want to be putting our best foot forward. So right now I'm gonna share with you folks a few of the strategies that I've actually uh, developed that have helped me build influence in my own career. And um, these are also work in progress. Um, I'm just trying these things out and would just love to hear a conversation about what's working for you folks and maybe try that out too. So. Um, please take these with a grain of salt and um, do what works best for you. All right, so the very first thing that I think is super important for introverts to remember is that you need to be intentional. Um, this is also interesting because it parallels some of what Sarah was sharing and being intentional with what you're saying too. Um, but in terms of building influence for introverts, I think it's important to be intentional, intentional about the opportunities that you're accepting. And of course, that means you have to say no sometimes, which can be the hardest part of it all. Um, so one of the things that I like to do is I like to ask myself a few questions before I accept an opportunity or decide to pursue something. Um, I wanna check if it's something that excites and challenges me. I wanna make sure I also have the time and energy to do it. Um, and I also wanna just make sure that the return and impact is gonna be worth my effort. So if I answer yes to most of these questions, then I probably will just go for it. And if you do the same, then you should go for it too. It seems like it could be an opportunity that might have a really great impact on your career. Um, um, and then if you find that you're actually kind of doubtful about some of these questions, that's when you're gonna wanna consider saying no. It can be super hard. I know it's not as hard as saying, I mean, it's not as easy as saying no to broccoli, but you get the, the point. Uh, there can be times though that it's not quite as clear cut as this. And so you might be wondering, what do you do in those cases? Um, so one of the things that I've done is I have a simple framework that helps me get clarity around whether I should accept or decline an opportunity. Um, I like to think about this in terms of the energy level that it requires from me and then also the impact it might have on my career. So based on the quadrant that I think something falls into, I can decide better whether it's worth it or not. So that is the first. Uh, the second strategy that I wanna share is that it's so important to be visible in your community. Um, you can do this in a ton of ways now too. Uh, it's because we have technology, it's incredible that you can actually build influence without ever talking to a person face to face. So this tweet has been pretty much my mantra in professional influence building um, over the past year or so. And I think it totally captures the essence of what I'm trying to say. Um, you can totally be an extrovert in the tweets, an introvert in the streets. Um, and you can choose to use, choose to use technology in a way that works for you and really select ways that you feel comfortable sharing your opinion um, out into the world. So some of the things that I've tried doing in the past are things like writing blog posts. Um, I like to tweet about stuff that I care about. Um, I've also tried starting a Dribbble or Instagram account and you can document your process and side projects there. And then you can also try um, writing follow-up emails to stakeholders after meetings. I find this works really well, especially if you don't get to speak up in meetings all the time. So these are a couple of things that you might wanna to try to take away. Um, and also just be intentional about the ones that you select here too. All right, so the final strategy I have is that introverts have this superpower and we can be empathetic. Um, we have the ability to really listen first. And I think this is such a huge, huge advantage in the workplace. You can really listen for what people care about 
what their values are, and really tailor your actions and message to that. And when you do so, that's how you're going to end up winning trust and eventually influence in the long run. So that is all that I have to share with you folks today. Um, I hope that you feel inspired to build your own influence, even if you've been scared to do so. Um, and thank you so much for having me.